well hello isn't this just an amazingly wonderful day a wonderful day indeed and i'm just so grateful to be alive and well today many persons if they had the opportunity to be alive they would want it but they don't have the opportunity and i do so i'm just so grateful for today hi i'm tanya powell edwards and it is another day for empowerment so it's empowerment wednesday everyone it's august 4 and so many things are happening and today we're gonna talk about sports and my very special guest is coming on really 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 soon so if you come on board and you have something that you want to say about Jamaica and sports and what's going on, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. So I'm Tanya Powell Edwards and I'm in Jamaica, man, the nicest place to be in the whole world um, for reggae music, for our athletic powers, uh, for a nice cuisine, for our sun, sea, and sand, and for our great people. This is Jamaica. Welcome to Empowerment Wednesday, and I want to share my quote for today. And the quote for today is, most of us are totally unaware that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our lives. Are you living a happy life? Are you completely miserable? Are you stressed out? Listen to this again. Most of us are totally unaware that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our lives. And that was said by Neville Goddard. Of course, we have to have a, a success quote for today. And it comes from the Bible. And it's from Matthew 6, verse 33. And it says, it's a great reminder. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Are you seeking success? Are you seeking more money? Are you seeking a husband? Are you seeking a wife? What are you seeking? Trust me when I tell you that all these things shall be added unto you if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, I want to make you aware that Tanya's Body Care is the sponsor for Empowerment Wednesday. And Tanya's Body Care is the home of naturally handcrafted Jamaican soaps, lotions, body oils, and underarm cream, and more. And you can follow Tanya's Body Care um, on Instagram, and you can shop Tanya's at www.tanya'sbodycare.org. So support us and get your natural products, and you will love them. The second thing I want to tell you before I share with you my success news and welcome our very special guest today is that on Friday, Friday, August 13, there we're going to be talking about love, we're going to be talking about wealth, and it's the power to get wealth, man, and it's where you want to be. It's a Zoom meeting, but we have a very, very special person in the person of Jennifer Key, who is a board certified counseling specialist. And she will be talking about this topic of love and wealth. I like to say to people, consider what is in your pocket. Is it enough? What is in your bank account? Is it enough? Do you have to give or to lend? The question is, how is love connected to your wealth? Is it? And if you had more loving relationships, could you have more wealth? And if you don't have great love relationships, is that connected to your wealth? So Friday, August 13, it's the place you want to be. And all you have to do is register at www tanya powell edwards.com you will see the flyer you have to click on it you have to book it and it takes about 
mm, 60 seconds or so, one minute to do the registration and to be ready to get to where you need to get for love, love and for wealth. And so that takes me right into our good news. And of course, we're talking sports today and my special guest is going to be on in just a moment. But the news that I want to share with you is Jamaica. Now, this may be late for some people, but for other people, it will be a great reminder, right? So Jamaica's Elaine Thompson-Hara breaks Flojo's 33-year-old record at the Tokyo Olympics. And I remember Flojo because back in the days, I don't do it anymore, but back in the days, I would lose sleep to watch the Olympics and to celebrate our athletes. But we used to also pay attention to the powers of the American sprinters and Flojo. Everybody knew who she was back in the day. Now Jamaica's own Elaine Thompson Hera has broken that 33 year old record from Flojo at the Olympics. And this story is from Eddie Pell's the Associated Press, um, Next Star Media uh, Wire. And it says, Elaine Thompson Hera of Jamaica wins the women's 100 meter final at the 2020 Summer Olympics on Saturday, July 31 in Tokyo, right? And so the 33 year, uh, she bro broke Florence Griffiths Joyner's 33 year old Olympic record. And she was even pointing at the scoreboard even before crossing the line in 10.61 seconds to defend her title and lead Jamaican sweep of medals. What a powerful run. Of course, Shelly Ann Fraser Price, the favorite, was behind her and became came second and Sharika Jackson got bronze so everybody was just celebrating one two three one two three every time I went to Instagram all over the place everyone was celebrating one two three people were knocking their pot covers and so to, to talk about this a little more it's time to bring in our very special guest let me see if she is here I'm searching for her and she is none other than Carlene Willis Walker. Carlene, let me know if you are on and ready because we got to talk, man. We got to talk about this. So are you watching this? Are you Jamaican? How did you feel when you saw the one, two, three? How do you feel about the overall Olympics? type something put it in okay wonderful carlene is here we're gonna get her online beautiful and we're following each other on facebook so usually when i'm talking to carlene there are no issues so i'm just so happy today to be able to have this conversation and she should be coming in in a moment or two so let's see what's happening here uh, we've sent out the invite to Carlene and we did what we're supposed to do. And, um, she should be coming in, in any moment now. Are you there, Carlene? All right. I'm waiting for you. I sent you an invite and I'm waiting for you to come in. So Jamaica has done the sweeps and I think we're probably going to leave the athletics with more, with the Olympics rather, with more medals than many of the other countries. And there is so much talk about our athletes in Tokyo. And I want to talk with Carlene because there are many Jamaicans, I'm maybe the, the odd one out, who spends a lot of time making sure that they have the pot cover and they're ready to knock it as the Jamaican athletes perform. So let's see what's happening with Carlene. Sent out the invite. Carlene, did you see my invite waiting for you? 
I added you. Let's go again. Add. And you should be coming on camera. So tell me what is happening on your side. I'm getting no answer from the guest. So let me find out what's going on. uh i'm i'm here and i whenever i put it it says it's adding you but it says no answer from the guest so check to see if there's something that you're not picking up on so that we can get that sorted out and get this going on because i'm so excited to talk about what is happening at the olympics all right so let me do this again no answer from live video guest that's what i'm getting at this end no answer from live video guest so let's see what's happening here tell me what's happening from your end All right, not sure what's happening. Let's try again. You are invited. All right, so what I'm going to do is um mm, let's try again. You are there when I add you and ah it's coming up now sometimes we have challenges but we connect there we go there we go hi carleen how are you doing today hi tanya are you hearing me i am hearing you i'm definitely hearing you how are you i'm good do i sound wonderful good? wonderful i'm hearing you well okay. and i'm excited about having this conversation with you because we talk almost every day and i know you've been losing sleep because of olympics right yes. so um first of all as a jamaican living overseas because carlene willis walker is a broker she's a real estate in real estate She's in Georgia in the USA, but she is Jamaican. And I know a lot of people probably um, overseas are trying to figure out, do I support the USA? Do I support Jamaica? There's no place like home. But Carleen, tell us about this love for sports that you have. Where did you develop this love for sports? Well, I think it's just, you know, Jamaicans overall um, just develop. A love for sports and I and I believe too from we were going to Alpha. I love track and field. <laughs> I love the idea of having interform competition. Right. And I remember our form used to compete against your form because your form was a threat and our form was a threat. So we used to love to compete. And I remember too um netball competition our form always wins so mm -hmm. then i've developed that love for sports and also i remember going to netball competition too at alpha because alpha was the number one school in those yes days. absolutely absolutely so i think i developed it from then mm -hmm. and then track and feel you know as a child watching merlin otty Grace Jackson, Juliet Cuthbert, you know, all these different athletes through the years. So I even, for me, I even went further in analyzing and really knowing the background of these athletes mm -hmm. that I can understand and basically compare it to my life because I view my life as, it's like we're running a race in this life. Yes. Yes, so we absolutely. Have we have to stay fit mentally, physically, spiritually, financially. You know, even in our marriage with our children, our relationship, we have to 
stay fit. So you are absolutely correct. Can I, before we get into the analysis, can I give you a little joke? Mm -hmm. No, sometimes I don't give jokes very well. So you have to promise to laugh whether it's funny or not, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say start laughing just yet. So you and I went to St. Francis, right? And yeah. St. Francis had a, had a very good sports program. Every year there was sports day. I remember one of the hosts was Francis. And one was Anthony, and I don't remember all of them. Now that mm -hmm. I'm talking to you, I think I was in Francis because I remember we used to do our little pom poms, little red pom poms, and so on. And yeah. this weird song that we used to sing in primary school Francis, row the boat ashore, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, the memories keep coming back. But yes. did you know that I missed? I did not make use of the opportunity to become an Olympian. Can you imagine? How could I have missed that? And let me tell you what happened. So in that area before the, the basic school, the, the, the basic school, there was a large area that we used to run and do a lot of different things early in the morning, um, break time and so on. And so one day I ran the fastest boy in my class and I won him. Mm. Me, Tanya, I beat him. <laughs> but I was so afraid of losing that when it was time to run him again, I was like, mm -mm, I'm not doing this. So one day the teacher came to class and she lined us up. The, the, the coach was going to take us to the field to practice for sports day. I don't mm. know where, but I walked at the back of the line and returned to my class as if I'd already run. Where did I develop that fear of failure from such a young age? I do not know. But as I grew older and thought about it, I said to myself, I could be at the Olympics. I could, could have been the early Shelley and Fraser Prize. I could have been the Deanna Hemings. I could have been the Millane Walker. I missed it just because I turned back. So if there's anybody listening to this and you want to do something but you're afraid, don't turn back because you rob yourself of the opportunity for success. And there is my story of how I could have potentially been one of Jamaica's best Olympians. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? I wouldn't know you, so hey, this is where we need to No, be. no, no, you would have said, I know her, we went to the same primary school and we went to the same high school. But yeah, but then, joke aside. close like that. <laughs> because you have your athletic friends. <laughs> yes, but front and joke aside, no. Um, it's 2020 and big things are going on in athletics. I mean, shockers all over the place. And I'll start yeah. out this commentary by saying that yesterday I was on the road and went to a location which will, which will remain nameless. Mm -hmm. And the person was there was sad. This was right after the race where mm -hmm. Shelley and Fraser Price came in, I think, fourth. Mm -hmm. She did the medal, but Elaine Thompson Hera won. Yeah. Eileen, I'm almost, I don't even want to say it, but it has to be said. Where I was, persons were saying, I feel it for Shelly Ann. And they were glad that a Jamaican won, but they were not, they, they, they were happy for Elaine, but they were saying, listen, I feel sad that Shelly Ann didn't win. And I was like, wow. People love Shelly Ann so much that they are working hard to be happy for Elaine. Was that where I was alone or do you get a sense that there are a lot of people struggling to be happy for Elaine and her success? Um, you know what I think it is, um, Tanya, I think it's just um, the changing of the guard. And um, sometimes we're so comfortable with the people that we know, the people that we're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And that can be a big one of the when Veronica Campbell Brown was Shelley came in 
and Veronica Campbell was the star at the time. People mm -hmm. were saying Veronica needs to stay. But, you know, it is okay. And it is okay that we have someone to replace because it would be even sadder mm -hmm. if we didn't have no one to replace. True. So I I feel that way too. Mm -hmm. But you do. I'm, feel, I'm feeling it because I'm gonna miss Shelly because you know her. You know, she has been that darling person, this person that stood up who didn't have certain things, but didn't allow her background or obstacles to define who she was. And my thing with her that I love about her is that she's giving back. She's mm -hmm. giving back to her community. So that's what right. I think that's what is the issue is because somebody has to come along and take, Shelly has to pass the button onto somebody else. And Elaine is that person at this time. We don't know what's going to happen mm -hmm. in the Olympics because already we see Sharika Jackson. You know, we just don't know. So we just have to. Our heart is broken. <laughs> Our heart uh. is sad. But it is, it is well. It is well. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it was when I watched the interview with Shillian, because I was there, like I said, I don't lose sleep for Olympics anymore. I used to. So I remember Flojo and these athletes because I used to say, I don't do it anymore. But I love Jamaica's chorus and that we're being celebrated as world-class athletes. When I look at the interview with, with, with Shillian Fraser-Price, I just saw her glowing and beaming, whether she was victorious or whether she wasn't. She seemed to be even so graceful in defeat that I can understand why people love her the way they do and why people are going to miss her. Mm -hmm. And I think that is something that all of us should strive to. We should have such a connection with people that when there is the changing of the guard, people are saying, no, no, stay, right? Mm -hmm. But we don't want to take anything away from Elaine thompson Hera. So what do you know about Elaine? You talked about Shellyan all the time, but I know you, you're going to do your research. What do you know about Elaine thompson Hera? Well, basically what I know about Elaine is that um, she's from the country, Manchester, Banana mm -hmm. Ground to be, you know, I've never heard of Banana Ground, but because of Elaine, I know that. Right. I've place. been up there. Nice, cold, cold place. Okay. Very cold. Okay. That's what I know about her. And I know that she was not, um, she was not one of the favorites or, you know, one in um, champs. She said she has never been to a pen release. She has never been to a character. You know, wow. all these things she have never been. Mm -hmm. um, she said, Paul, I think it was Paul Francis, Stephen Francis' brother, was the one who saw her and came to her and told her that they wanted her at MVP. And when she took, to me, she was surprised. So when she took her um, CXCs and stuff, she contacted him and told him that she didn't pass, you know, mm. I think it was maths or something, she said. And he said, don't worry about it, just come. Right. So based on that information, and I think also she went to Christiana Secondary or High School. In my days, it was secondary. I think now they right, changed it to right. high. And mm -hmm. then she moved on to Manchester High. So that's where, that's what I know basically of her. I knew, I remember when she came on the scene in about maybe 2014, 2015. And when she won, she got silver medal in the two, 200 meters behind Daphne mm -hmm. Shippers. And that time she, she ran a personal best of, I think it was 2165. Um, so at that time she was the fifth fastest. Mm -hmm. Before the sixth fastest in the world at the time. Um, 
and then after that basically she she for a year i think it was 20 and then 2016 she won the 100 and the 200 meters and um then after that year for the rest of the 2016 track and field year she was winning winning diamond leagues diamond leagues diamond leagues that's because because that's where they make their money that's where they make their money. Now you talk about money, and I listened to a YouTube um, vlog or blog with Safa Powell, yeah. and he was really saying, "Leave the athletes alone. Stop crucifying the athletes because they don't make money from Jamaica for what they're doing." No, when he don't. said that, I kind of looked at it with a different perspective because I'm figuring, why would I want to put my body under such grueling um rigorous exercise i hear athletes train until they vomit sometimes mm -hmm. they they have to have a masseuse to give them these massages and stuff they have to pay attention to their weight and their diet they have to lift weights and everything why would somebody want to put themselves why do you think and anybody else online why would somebody put themselves through that to wear the Jamaican colors or any other colors for that matter? Because Tanya, it's just like you doing your business because being an athlete is a business. It doesn't matter if it's a country paying you yes or no. We all know that, you know, our country, we don't have the resources like that. So it, but it's, it, it's a profession. They're mm -hmm. professional athletes and they get their um, sponsorship from different companies. Um, Cause I think NCB is one of the companies that sponsor Elaine. That, right, I is see them with Elaine, right. Mm -hmm. right. Right, so, and, and as what I say, once they become that elite athletes, I mean, they can go on the Diamond League and that's where they make their money. Right. So, and you ask the question, why would I put my body through all of that? <laughs> but Tanya, but Tanya, if you're supposed to live a daily life, you're supposed to exercise. And exercise yes. involves lifting weights. Yes. It involves lifting weights and, yes. and um, watching what you're eating and drinking mm -hmm. the amount of water. Yes, it's just that you're not going to be running but right. you're supposed but, to but if you think about it it, it 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 doesn't just mean that it means getting up at a specific time it means having that discipline to be coached by somebody who's going to tell you how to run um when to run how many weights to lift when not to lift weights it is a coaching life where your coach basically is like your mother and father why would somebody want to put themselves why do you think somebody wants to put themselves in a place where to get to success somebody has to tell you because i remember when i used to watch usain bolt's interviews he would always say my coach says my coach says and i hear that from shelly and as well sometimes so it's really like your success is pegged to, look to, to you following orders yeah but my question is isn't life like that because we answer, we have, each of us have somebody that is going to hold us accountable, whether it's our children, because sometimes you hear people say they don't start living their life until they have a child and they realize the responsibility. And that's when they start to do the right thing. They start mm -hmm. putting things into perspective. So my view is that all of us have somebody that is holding us accountable. Whether it is God, some of us fear mm -hmm. God in the sense that, you know what, I'm going to do this the right way because when judgment day hits, I don't want daddy to be saying, you did not do that. Right. You did not do this. You did not do it to the best of your ability. I gave you a gift. And what did you do with the gift? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. all of us have somebody, even maybe our family, maybe we're coming from a background where we see certain certain things keep on happening, and in yourself, you're. I have to. I have to stop this. I have to break this. 
and you want that the next generation to do be better. So you get up early because mm -hmm. it's not the second feel. Because I remember when we were going to school and because I wanted to get that bus at a certain time, I right. had to get up early to get the bus to go to school. Mm -hmm. Right on time because I didn't want to be in that long line, that late line in the sun. Right. So everyone yes, I forgot about that. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're saying that I mean you're making me wish that I was an athlete. It means that I would have to be a little more disciplined. I'd have to work with schedules, but ultimately I would reap success. So let, let's talk about the athletes who don't look so successful. But just before that, let's talk about Megan Tapper. The energy of Megan Tapper. Who is she? Um, what I'm seeing is that she literally had on her page from high school to be an Olympian. And I think um, Asafa had that as well. And they have achieved it. But the energy that this girl has is like... It's, it's penetrating. Tell me your thoughts on, on Megan Tapper. All right. Let me say this. You, you talk about Asaf, Asafa and what he wrote. Asafa, one of the things that he wrote, and I will clearly remember, he said he wanted to break records. Mm. He did not say he wanted to win Olympic medal, gold medal. He said okay. he wanted to break records. So and it's important broke, what you write. It's definitely exactly. important what you write. He broke his, his records on the Diamond League circuit. Mm -hmm. So people need to understand that he did not say he wanted medals. He said he right. wanted to break records. And if you look at it, that's where you make your money too, breaking records. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he did what he's supposed to do. And if people don't understand the sports, is when he's on the diamond league running that's where he makes his money right right but most importantly you're saying the vision that they wrote is what they achieved so writing the vision is critical from a very early age we need to get our children to write the vision of where they want to go yeah right and megan did that so what's your and what are your thoughts on megan and also megan said she wanted to be she wanted to do hurdling. She wanted to do hurdling. And she wanted to be the face of Nike. <laughs> wow. So she's doing a hurdling. She's doing it. Right? Mm -hmm. even, even though people will say that she's too short to do it. She's doing it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So sometimes you will have your dreams and your goals written down. And people will come and tell you that you cannot do it and half of us 99 percent of us stop because that one person said you cannot do it that that is so true right that is that so one true. person and and this is my question who told you that who told you because that's what god asked adam in the garden when he said right. to him i'm naked he said who told you so we need to ask ourselves, sometimes these people is our family members, but who is speaking through them to tell you that you are not? Right, that you can't. You right. can't. Right. right. And it's amazing and something that you just said. Many mm -hmm. times we have 10 people telling us positive things and we're not listening, but one person who's negative, we allow them to we receive the negativity from them and destroy yes. major parts of our lives. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why we have to be careful that we don't allow so many people in our space. Yeah, our it's space. very interesting too, Carlene, that the, the quote that I used this morning comes from somebody unknown to me, but their words are powerful. Neville Goddard. And he said, most of us are totally unaware that our inner conversations are the causes of the circumstances of our lives. Mm. That inner conversation. And yeah. one of the things that I love about coaching um, is that it pays attention to fixing the inner voice, mm -hmm. that inner voice that keeps us back from where we want to be. 
And though we're talking about it in the context of sports today, so Megan Tapper, for example, she came out with a rap. She came out with her thank you list um, to her husband and her father and everybody. And she was just like vibing up the place and everything. So clearly she has been able to take control of her inner voice. So the question that I have for persons watching and who will watch this afterwards is, what is your inner voice? What is yeah. your inner voice telling you? Is it telling you that you can't? Or mm -hmm. is it telling you that you can? And if your inner voice is telling you that you can't, you need to shut that up. Yes. You need to shut that up. And how do you do it? One of the ways to shut it up is to get into the word of God. And I tell you, one of the things that makes me a little sad is that whenever I do these lives and you talk about the word of God, if I have six people on, it goes down to four because suddenly people think that you're preaching. But literally, a scripture that tells me that before I was placed in my mother's womb, God knew me and ordained a purpose for my life. That scripture helps me to overcome a great deal of fear and a great deal of negative energy that sometimes we pick up over the years so yeah. what are you listening to what negativity do you need to strip away from your life you have to work at it you have to get that coach that right coach like elaine thompson Hera, like shelly and fraser price like megan topper like asafa like you saying we need the right coach to get our mind to function as it should and our bodies will follow a lot of people are exercising the body, but not exercising the mind. So Carleen, as we watch the success of our athletes and as we bask in the glory of their successes, tell us about some of the other persons you've been paying attention to and your thoughts on their success so far. Well, um, if you look at, um, I'm going, they haven't run the finals yet, the 400 mm -hmm. final. And I'm looking at um, McLeod, Candice McLeod. Mm -hmm. And I've been observing her even before she qualified for, and, and I remember seeing her because she's friends with Sharika Jackson. Okay. So I, I follow them on IG. So yeah, I, I know you do. <laughs> I would see certain posts and stuff. So I will, you know, always observe her. And just that additional year, because the, the Olympic was pushed off, pushed mm -hmm. to this year, 2021, I mean, it's a turnaround, because she used to run at the back of the, the line. Now it's right. a turnaround. And, and she broke that 50-meter 50, 50 barrier. She broke it mm -hmm. 50 seconds. She's now 49. She's the third person. She's the third fastest person going into the finals. Right, so I'm watching her, and um, big shout out to um, Stephanie McPherson. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's she's there. She was here representing Jamaica for years, and now she's below that 50 mark. Also, um, okay. she has the fastest time going into the finals. Another mm -hmm. personal best, um, 49.34, I think she has. So. I mean, I'm, I'm happy for these people. I'm excited. <laughs> right. Another thing that I saw is that they may not necessarily win and they may not necessarily medal, but they still can like celebrate personal success best. because they have yeah. oh. Tell us about the personal best. When somebody says that your personal best, what does that mean? You know what, Tanya, it's so funny that I was watching, re-watching some of the... Um, the track and field this morning before I got on. And one of the things, Geneva Russell, Jamaican, she did she did the hurdles, 400 meter mm -hmm. hurdles. And she came in fourth with a personal best. And I said, Lord, and I was watching her interview. And I said, Lord, our best, our personal best is good enough for you. It's not about the medals. It's not about, you know, on the podium mm -hmm. but once you have done once you give a personal best that means that that means you have done your best because right. everybody race is different everybody mm -hmm. season is different everybody timing is different 
So we need to understand, and I'm I'm not only talking about it in track and field um, scenarios, but even in your life, right. all of us personal best is different. Mm -hmm. Some of our goals are just different. I mean, if somebody run um, 49, 14, and her and, and Geneva is 49, 34, I mean, that person is going to go after a gold medal because right. her timing is different. Mm -hmm. So it's just like both of us, we are, we are in this entrepreneurship thing. We are business owners and our goals are going to be different. Right. Goals, and, and th this is why we don't need to compare ourselves to people because mm -hmm. comparison kills happiness. It does. And we need to look at our lane, look at ourselves, look at our progress, and we'll move forward. And that's why the that, word that, of God... That is a very important point that you just made, because I want to touch on a little controversy. I hear a lot of Jamaicans saying that there is friction between Shelley Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson Hero. Mm -hmm. And so what I hear them saying is things like, when they're standing on the podium, there is distance between the two of them. You can see that they're not friends together. And I'm wondering, is this true? I don't see it because I don't pay attention to it. Um, is it that we just love to create friction where there is no friction? Um, how do we navigate this space of people saying these two ladies are not friends? I don't know if it is true or not, but each of them are staying, should be learning to stay in their own lane, but also being able to celebrate each other's success. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, Tanya, maybe because it's the Olympics and most people don't follow track and field, but I saw that a long time ago. Okay. I saw it a long time ago. And just by watching, it wasn't that I, I know about them or I speak to them, but just by observing certain things even at the jamaica trials you could have i saw it i mm. saw it but my thing is and i guess that's why shelly left the camp mm. and um i listened to oral tracy and as what he said he always said it he said you cannot have two bull bull in one pen ah uh. So is either you have the two fastest women or the two persons running against each other mm -hmm. for a medal, sometimes it's going to cause problems. How right. do you as a coach um, deal with a work plan for these ladies? How do you do that? Mm -hmm. So somebody has to leave because something is happening. Right. It's friction. It's going to be right. friction. Right. So I, what he said, and I agree with him, it's best that they go their separate ways. Mm -hmm. So you can have, it, it's like, for, for instance, myself. I mean, I have, we have many real estate agents in the same office. Mm -hmm. So how do you do this thing? How do you, for me, I just keep my, my space. Right. No, competition competition is a good thing, but if it's we're gonna compete thing. with each other and destroy each other, then I can can understand. I I'm just saying I can't okay. confirm that there are frictions between these ladies. That's not what we're saying, but we're saying that if there is, both yeah. of them as champions need to be able to stay in their lane but appreciate mm -hmm. each other in their lanes and and show each other that love, which in the little bit that I've seen, I've seen Shellyan kind of show that kind of sportsmanship or sportswomanship, as you call it. Yeah. Um, would you agree that you're seeing that from her? Yeah, I've seen it on more than one occasion. I've seen it. Um, mm -hmm. But you know what, Tanya, I don't want to forget. I just want to mention something to you. You talk about frictions and stuff. I remember when we were in grade six. And you know, we were doing common entrance. And you know, our mm -hmm. teacher, we had a, our class was packed. I remember that so much. And we were in a very competitive class. I don't know if you remember, 
but I remember the Browns. We had about maybe four or three Browns in our class. Mm -hmm. And they will compete with each other. And if some one of them fail, there will be tears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what it did, it pushed, it, it pushed the entire class to do their best. And because right. of that, so many of us passed our coming entrance for, I mean, prominent high school. Mm -hmm. So, and then when I went to Alpha, we had certain girls in our class who used to compete as well. True. We used to compete, right? <laughs> After yeah, a test, yeah, yeah. there's a particular girl in particular. <laughs> We'll be walking around in the class asking, how much you got? How much you got? And we said it. Then you just see she disappear. You're like, okay, you didn't get anything too good. So you right. just disappear. But for me, I'm a competitor and I love competing because mm -hmm. it brings the best out of me. Right, right, right. right. And, you learn, and also you learn from your competitor because if you watch Elaine's um, interview, and she said, she wrote down her goals and she started watching Usain's race and Flo mm -hmm. Joel's race. Mm. Mm. So, so guess yes. what? Sometimes with competition, you will, you will do things that nobody expected you to do. And I'm not talking about you? killing nobody or whatever. You oh. have said the most amazing thing that people need to know. Now, we have a few more minutes. We have to wrap up, but let me tell you something. This is the message that people need to get. There is nothing wrong with you having your goals early. Mm -hmm. There is something great in writing down your goals. There yeah. is something great in praying over your goals and yes. now you've got to lift them from paper to action. Mm -hmm. But when you write them down, it's like you've already won. You're already the winner. We are seeing you and I talking about Elaine having her goals, writing her goals. Mm -hmm. Asafa had these goals. He probably didn't know all that it required to get there. Megan Tapper having these goals. I'm almost sure, I can't say for with 100% certainty because I don't know her, but I'm almost sure that Shelly Ann Fraser Price is the person who has tunnel vision when it comes to the things that she wants to achieve. We yes. see you saying just heading out and just, and all the greats, Asafa mentioned, you know, they, they um, I don't even remember all of the names, a lot of them are in coaching now. But this is what I love about the sports. Not necessarily watching, but it's the, it is the technique of paying attention to your coach and being disciplined and heading out and training and writing the vision and then heading towards it. These are life principles that if each of us have, we are geared towards success. You know, so I just want you to just in the last minute mention some other names that we need to watch um, as we move forward. As you know, as you talk about there are more finals to come, there's the possibility of more medals for Jamaica. So tell us what we should be looking out for and, and give us some names. I believe that the men 110 hurdles, because we're going to go to our men. They, one of them is going to medal, I really believe, because we have two of them in the final, and yet we have not sent our world leader, Omar McLeod, because he didn't mm. make it. But I believe one of them is going to, if everything goes as planned, one of them is going to medal. Right. So we have um, Ronald Levy and we have um, Parchment. I didn't even realize Parchment was still running, but you know, yeah yeah right and also as what i mentioned in the 400 hurdles for women we have stephanie mcpherson and candice mcleod mm -hmm. um, we're going to do our four by 100 heats tonight i think it's at eight o'clock 
So we're looking forward to a medal there. And um, mm -hmm. at that point, we're going to see our um, young athletes, Brianna Williams. She right. Will be, she'll be doing the first leg of the 4 by 100 Mm-hmm. So, and then I'm, I'm thinking that our woman 4x4 four four should medal. 4x4 four four relay, we should medal. So, right. And, but um, even, if, even if they don't, how would you feel about them? If they don't, are you going to be cussing them? Are no, you going to be... I'd feel disappointed, but mm -hmm. I mean, it is what it is. It's just a game. You know, there's always mm -hmm. a tomorrow. And I mean, these, these, these athletes went so far during this time of uncertainty, getting tested over and over. You know, it's not like mm -hmm. what we are accustomed to. So we just have to celebrate them. The fact that they were brave enough to want to go, that, that's good enough. Mm -hmm. um, right, right. Well, Carlene, um, as, you always talk, as we were talking, I kind of just went online and I was trying to get the current information. Mm -hmm. But the old, some of the, you know, the trendsetters came up. And I just want to share that with us as we want to ask you to think about the, the closing message that you want to share. Mm -hmm. List of medals in Arthur Wint in the 1948 London Games, that's in athletics, men's 400 meters won gold. Herb McKinley is another name we know. That's also 1948, men's 400. He won silver. Arthur wins silver in 1948. And gold, George Roden in the 1952 Helsinki Games. So we have had a long history of winning medals in these games. Um, what I'm seeing here on the internet is that I'm, I'm not sure if this is the overall tally over the years, but medals Jamaica's won 22 goals, 35 silver, 21 bronze. That gives us a total of 78 medals that has been won um, in the Olympics um, over the years. And so we, little country that is barely seen on the map, but as they would say, we little but we talawa. What? is your final message in these moments, um, Carlene, to the athletes, to anyone who will come and watch this um, when we upload to YouTube. Just take a few moments and just give them that, that message from your heart at this time. One of the main thing that has been jumping at me is our mindset. Because in track and field, you have to be up here, has to be right, you know, for as what you described, why is it that I want to put my body through all this? Mm -hmm. for, there's a possibility I won't medal. You know, I'm not getting paid by my country. So many little things. But my, my thing is a lot of people will question me too. Why are you doing what you do? Why don't you just go and get a nine to five? <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, for me, when, when you have something inside of you, just keep on stirring up. And that's where God is pushing you to. So your mindset, you have to get that mind right. Mm -hmm. because when you, you're going to be attacked mentally, right. you're going to be attacked. Why are you doing that? That don't make no sense. Da, 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 da. You know, you're going to, but one thing I have to say is not just in athletics, it's in anything that you decide to do, you're going to have that attack. So I just want to remind, remind anyone, not just the athletes, but everyone, because we're running, life is a race, it's mm -hmm. a journey, it's a marathon. Right. So one, one of the things that jump out at me is that your mind has to go to the place that you want to go for your body to move. Mm. So if your mind has not gone there, you're not going to go there. Right, right. Very good and powerful message. I just yeah. want persons, is what t-shirt that you're wearing? Is which country shirt that you're wearing? You know, no. the Jamaica. Brazil or, what is that? 
Jamaica. Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica. Okay. Jamaica. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Carleen, thank you so much for talking with me today. I just want people to know in these closing moments that this broadcast of Empowerment Wednesday is brought to you by Tanya's Body Care. I'm off to tell you, say, Tanya's is the home of handcrafted natural Jamaican bar soaps, lotions, body oils, underarm cream, and more. You can follow Tanya's Body Care on IG or shop, 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 shop Tanya's at www.tanya'sbodycare.org. And on the 13th of August, Carlene and I are going to be again together with many other persons talking about the power to get wealth. And the focus is going to be on love and wealth. Tell your friend, tell them to go to www.taniapowelledwards.com. The flyer is there. It says love and wealth. It says August 13. It has the list of sponsors, including Carleen's very own company, Brownstone Home Solution, um, Empowering Children and Family, Tanya's Body Care, and um, Keys to a Healthy Relationship. Book that. It takes 60 seconds or less to be confirmed for it. It's going to be a life changer. I said it. Life-changing event. Love and wealth. And in these closing moments, here is a Jamaican proverb. Sometimes the patwa give me trouble, you see, but I'm very Jamaican, so I'm not make it beat me up today, you know. It say, you think I one day monkey one wife? Mm. You think I one day monkey one wife? And what does that mean? It means, do you think you won't need my help in the future? Never forget those who help you. And even as we talk about our athletes, they could never be where they are without the help coaches and coaching teams. I got this reminder of Jamaican proverb from myislandjamaica.com. And I just want to close with our usual empowering questions. Are you where you want to be in life? What do you need to get to your destination? Do you have a skill? What's your goal and how do you begin to achieve them? Is your vision clear? And have you written it down on paper? I'm Tanya Powell Edwards with my very special guest, Carleen Willis Walker. And today we have focused on sports. We've included the word of God and we have included so much content on empowerment. All you have to do is tune in, share with a friend, subscribe to this channel. And until next time, I'm Tanya saying, walk good and God bless you. Bye. Bye.